We've all had trouble falling asleep at night or been awake in the wee hours of the morning, staring at the ceiling, hoping sleep will arrive. In fact, according to the CDC, one third of adults in the U.S. aren't getting enough sleep. So what do you do when you can't sleep? Welcome to the Healthier You Podcast. I'm Dr. Ashley Williams, and today I'm talking with Dr. Keisha Sullivan, a sleep specialist at Kaiser Permanente, about simple steps that you can take to improve your sleep starting tonight. Welcome, Dr. Sullivan. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Dr. Williams. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you. Okay, so how much sleep do we need each night? Yes. Yeah, so you know, I'm sure everybody's heard on average adults need somewhere between seven and nine hours of sleep. But just as I said, that's an average, right? Some people can function on four hours of sleep. Some people need 10 hours of sleep to function. Um, so what you need really depends on your body. But it is recommended that for infants and toddlers, they get between 12 and 15 hours of sleep. And that's for the whole day, which includes naps. For um, school age children or from from ages three to ten, they should be getting about uh, twelve hours of sleep. Teenagers should be getting about nine, and then, as I said before, adults should be getting about seven to nine hours of sleep. So that's really the goal for everyone, but everybody's needs are different, and it's really best that you contact your primary care doctor to discuss what's best for you and your family. Got it. Okay, so you mentioned with toddlers and infants having naps during the day. Is there anything that a person can do during the day to improve their sleep at night? Yes. So key, sleep hygiene. You want to make sure that you're doing everything you can during the day to maximize your sleep at night. So a couple tricks could be avoiding, ca well, I'm sorry, not avoiding, but um, discontinuing drinking caffeine after lunchtime. The reason for this is because caffeine blocks what we call adenosine. Uh, adenosine is a hormone that builds up in the brain that actually is sleep promoting. So um, over the course of the day, the longer you're awake, the more adenosine that's built up and that makes you sleepier. So if you're drinking caffeine, you know, into the afternoon, you're definitely going to disrupt that process. You should also avoid drinking alcohol at least four to six hours before bedtime. And the reason for that is because alcohol may help you fall asleep. And, you know, some people do drink it um, to help them fall asleep, but it's definitely going to disrupt your sleep at night. And it also decreases your deep sleep, studies have found. Some other things you want to make sure is you want to not eat three to four hours prior to bedtime. If you do have to eat, I recommend sticking to um, snacking that's high in protein, um, such as nuts or maybe, you know, a meat, maybe, you know, um, but you want to avoid things that are high in calories and carbohydrates. Uh, one last thing that I just want to recommend is don't get in the bed unless you're sleepy. So in order to create good habits, we want to make sure that our bed only or I should say our bodies only associate um, sleep with our beds. So when you get in the bed and you do things like um, schoolwork and watch TV, your body gets confused. Am I supposed to be awake or am I supposed to be sleeping? We recommend that the bed is only um, reserved for two things, sleep and sex. If you're not doing one of those two things, then you should get out of the bed. So what does a healthy bedtime routine look like? Yes. So a healthy bedtime routine is definitely the number one way to improve your sleep. A bedtime routine may also be referred to as sleep hygiene. So some of the things that you can do to improve your sleep hygiene would be to avoid electronics. You want to make sure you're not looking at screens at least an hour or two prior to bedtime. What happens is that blue light that's on that device um, actually stimulates the brain and keeps you from sleeping. You also want to make sure that the thermostat is between 60 and 67 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to make sure that you, the environment is cool, quiet, and dark. So if you do have light coming in from your windows, whether that be from 
the street lights outside or the natural light, depending on when you actually sleep. Um, it is important that you try to get blackout curtains. Uh, you want to make sure that it's a, a quiet environment. Uh, if you live in the city, you may want to consider listening to white noise to help drown out some of the, the horns and the other sounds that the city may, you know, provide. You also want to make sure that in addition to lowering your body temperature and keeping the room cool, that you're taking a warm bath or a shower. That also helps decrease your core temperature. Um, and the reason for that is because there's vasodilation that occurs of your extremities, which helps release some of that heat, causing your core temperature to decrease. And that also signals for your body it's time to go to bed. In addition, sometimes we get in the bed and, you know, our mind is racing. It may be hard to relax because of things that occurred over the course of the day. So in that instance, it's very important to try to promote relaxation te techniques whether that be breathing, progressive muscle relaxation, um, or, you know, just listening to a podcast or um, yeah. <laughs> listening, listening to a podcast or, or white noises. And there's a lot of great apps out there that can help provide some of these programs for you, such as the Calm app. And Kaiser actually offers the Calm app for free to our, to our patients. I love it. The Calm app also has like bedtime stories, yeah. which I really love, um, that really can help you get to sleep. Um, what are your thoughts on melatonin and other over-the-counter sleep aids? Can that help a person sleep? Yes. So uh, melatonin, um, it's widely used, you know, and you see them in pharmacies. Unfortunately, they're not regulated right, by the FDA. Um, different um, products may have different amounts of melatonin despite what's said on the back of the bottle. So it's very important that you talk to your healthcare provider about melatonin that they recommend. Um, but really, not everyone needs melatonin. Melatonin should be reserved for those who either do shift work or have circadian rhythm disorders um, and sometimes individuals with um, disabilities can also benefit from melatonin. But usually for the general population, if you maintain to a good sleep hygiene, if you maintain good sleep hygiene, you should be able to sleep um, effectively and efficiently. Got it. So what if I am doing great at falling asleep? I've got a routine in place, but I keep waking up in the middle of the night. What would you suggest? Yeah. Do not look at your clock. Please do not look at your clock. I know that's the first thing we all want to do. It's simple. It's easy. You grab it, but it creates anxiety and stress, right? Um, you look at the clock, you wake up, you're like, it's 3 a.m. I have to get up in two hours. You try to go back to sleep. You wake up, look at the clock again. It's, you know, it's four. Now I only have an hour. My rule of thumb is put the phone on the other side of the room um, and put the, alarm, put the alarm on too, but put it, put it on the other side of the room. That should keep you um, from, you know, having an urge to look at it. Also, you want to make sure that you're, you're cool, you're comfortable. We talked about the temperature of the room. You want to make sure that you're wearing... Um, you know, you don't want to get too hot, so you want to make sure that you're wearing uh, nightwear that's breathable. You want to make sure that it's cotton, it's lightweight. You want to make sure that your comforter is also meets your needs, whether you're hot at night or 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 cold. And um, you also want to make sure that you handle things such as pain. So, for individuals who either have fibromyalgia or have um, arthritis or or any other type of pain issues, um, it's best that you treat that pain prior to bedtime because that can definitely disrupt and interfere your, in your sleep. Got it. Um, so when do you think a sleepless night would warrant a trip to seeing your doctor? Yes. So we all have ups and downs, right? Nobody's sleep is perfect. It, it waxes and, and wanes. Um, but you want to see a healthcare provider when it's consistent, 
when you've done everything that you could do, you maximize your sleep hygiene, um, you know, your your pain is under control, your temperature is right, you're you're staying on a schedule. I would go talk to someone. Also, if you notice that you're snoring, you're choking or gasping in the middle of the night, you also want to talk to your healthcare provider so they can roll out sleep apnea and other conditions that could be causing disruptions in your sleep. Um, and you know, if you ever feel as though you're having trouble breathing, you definitely want to seek medical attention immediately because that's really nothing to play around with. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Sullivan, for this great information. It sounds like there are a few key takeaways for those looking to get a better night's sleep. One, watch what you eat and drink. Avoid caffeine after lunch, avoid alcohol four to six hours before bed, and have your last meal at least three hours before bed. Two, stay away from your bed and bedroom until you're ready to fall asleep. Three, create a healthy bedtime routine. Turn down that thermostat. Turn off screens at least 30 minutes before bed and try using breathing techniques to relax your body. And four, Focus on lifestyle changes before trying over-the-counter sleep aids like melatonin. And lastly, five, create a routine that sets you up for seven to nine hours of sleep each night. For more sleep tips from our experts and other healthy living advice, visit kp.org slash doctor and listen to more episodes of Healthier You wherever you get your podcasts. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to share it with others who may find it helpful. Thank you from all of us at Kaiser Permanente. Be well.